Hello, Eva. Hi. Hi, we are live now. Hello, thank you for coming with us and thank you for sharing your time um, with such am amazing wisdom. It's a pleasure for me to be in front of Dan Winter. I learn a lot from him, uh, such a depth uh, understanding of reality and DNA. I would love if you can resume, if it's possible to resume your curriculum, please, for the viewers to know who you are. Just to introduce myself, hi, I'm Dan Winter, fractalfield.com, fractalu.com, therify.net, theimploder.com. Um, we uh, are developing technologies around implosion, uh, as many people know around the world. Uh, my background, uh, electrical engin engineering, University of Detroit, and graduate work in psychophysiology. I was trained as a systems analyst with IBM, Detroit, Chicago, and Poughkeepsie. I uh, was the lead uh, inventor and director of electric motor generator technician repair, a business family business, Western New York for many years. And then I uh, founded a spiritual community in North Carolina. And then uh, I founded a, um, a multimedia lab. Actually, I was one of the co-founders of, of Gaia TV and helped set up the video lab there. And then I began uh, continuous round the world lecture tours for about 10 to 15 years, starting with Flower of Life groups in Australia and around the world. And uh, then we did uh, research in physics of consciousness. I lived in Australia, in Amsterdam, in Germany and South France, uh, based in Australia. Uh, we have uh, multiple technologies at my inventions, the imploder.com for water vortex implosions, hypersolubility living water. We have plasma technology, therify.net, which is in use in 25 countries doing rejuvenation for people and uh, pain reduction and many things, which is very powerful for water treatment as well. Our Bloom the Desert project, our carbon nano project. We have multiple energy projects. I coordinate teams of inventors around the world. We have a lot going on. We have a fractal university online. We have about six different pioneering biofeedback technologies, flameandmind.com, ithrive.com. And we're now working with uh, children who can see without their eyes, documented brainwave physics. So we can play with a lot of that. And I'm here to have fun with you today. Thank you, Ava. Well, thank you for the resume because that was like a, a encyclopedia of knowledge. I wish you can update all the um, policymakers and representatives that are doing their best without your wisdom. And as you said, you are working with implosion and with kids that you train kids for them to see through another glance that are not the eyes and to see through the vortex that creates matter. Can you explain a little bit more of that, about that? Sure, we could start there. Then maybe I'll do a few visuals on that. It's called the, the World Without Blindness Project originally. And um, I'll, I'll do a share screen here to see if we could, one moment, because <clears throat> I have that website. The website about that project, here one moment. Yeah, see the, how fractal that was? That's embeddability yeah. right there. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but I was going to go to the screen about the World Without Blindness Project, which is here. Uh, so the technology we use for this is flameinmind.com. And here we're doing a spectrum analysis of the electrocardiogram. I'm sorry, the electroencephalogram, EEG, power spectra of the brain waves. And here you see, uh, in this case, it's a frequency signature of my brain waves during a moment of intense bliss related to Kundalini, where you see five harmonics in golden ratio. And actually we see harmonics in golden ratio and octaves in this group of children who see without their eyes. Um, I think you can see some of the videos here. So these are actually, um, let's see if you can see Let's here. put in the public. Uh, you put um, an interface to measure the wavelengths of the brain with neuroscience devices, and you blindfold the kids, and the kids are able to see, to paint, to grab stuff, to tell which color is what without seeing through the eyes, seeing with a gland that is in the brain that might be asleep in half of us. Uh, is this... Um, part of the brain, it gets damaged by watching too many screens because in some uh, studies you explain it like uh, the Skywalker muscle that is the muscle that allows imagination. Is the imagination affected to watching too many screens that the kids are always playing video games or, or like watching cartoons instead of playing with the imagination or it is another thing about? 
Yes, no, that is what we're talking about. We should finish the background. We're using a, a, a wireless Bluetooth headset transmitting to iOS, iPhone, iPad uh, called Muse with the flame in mind. Here you can see a little girl uh, who is blindfolded and you see her brain waves. And she talks about actually seeing through a vortex or a tube and you can see her actively uh, coloring and assembling things. She's act These kids are actually actively seeing without their eyes. Uh, what you are referring to um, was called, uh, we called it the Skywalker muscle. And it relates to the story from uh, Steiner who showed that um, if children watch too many screens, especially when they're young, they say under seven or seven, 14, um, they act, they're passively seeing images projected at them so much that they lose the inner muscle called the Skywalker muscle, enabling them to fabricate their own image from inside called active imagination, I mag image imagination, mag, uh, mag uh, agni matrix of fire. And the, the physics is that when they have this uh, cascade of brain waves, it fabricates an implosive vortex in the brain called perception or consciousness itself. And that's why they say, the children tell you, oh, it's like I'm seeing through a tube inside. And at that moment, you'll see many examples here. They're making these cascades of harmonics in their brainwave. So yes, the danger is that young children who uh, lose the inner muscle to make a uh, coherent picture inside their head, they lose what we call the Skywalker muscle. The physics of that is instructed perhaps in the famous story of the Steiner School where kids are taught to sequentially over a period of days, accurately draw the picture of a rose to the point where the, the, the process inside their head of fabricating the inner image of the rose gets extremely rigorous and resolved. And ultimately the test is that then when they close their eyes and visualize the rose from within, the class is informed if they have succeeded, if the room fills with the smell of roses at that moment. And we understand the physics of the flowering brain since the imploding brain literally uh, triggers the infrared spectra, which is the physics of olfaction for those who actually understand smell and why hummingbirds will crash into a window if someone inside is having bliss, even in a sealed house, because they smell it in the infrared. Okay. But wow. So the infrared can, be, uh, can create uh, a sense uh, even if you don't see it, right? All the invisible creates an effect, of course. You well, said that, the, sorry? Go go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, you said that the kids, they when you blindfold the kids, they tell you that they see and they can grab stuff and define colors and paint the small pieces because they see through a tunnel. And that tunnel is the vortex, the implosive vortex that you discover as uh, the creator of, uh, that implodes the DNA in the decadric structures and, and restructure water and restore life uh, itself. Can we can we know a little bit more about all that vortex that they see? Well, yes, uh, just to give the background here, my original invention before flameinmind.com was called the bliss tuner. And I built that to measure golden ratio between the frequencies in the brain after our famous partner, Professor Karatkov in Russia, had worked extensively with the World Without Blindness Project of kids in Russia who were seeing without their eyes, measuring their brain waves. And he found the primary indicator of children who could see without their eyes, and even adult, adults, was the fact that the uh, ratio between the frequency of alpha and beta would go to golden mean ratio, not unlike the famous mind mirror here where their uh, transcendence, uh, creative spiritual state, again, was a ratio of alpha to beta. Uh, of golden ratio in frequencies in the brainwave, meaning the brainwaves are harmonically cascading like an implosion, caduceus, uh, making this vortex tunnel work. And that charge implosion literally is the physics of bliss and transcendence and charge radiance because implosion precedes radiance. And that ability to relax that well with that self-confidence to have this quality of the bliss euphoria experience is measurably and teachably the precedent to the ability to see without your eyes, which then is instructive about how to learn to lucid dream and how to die correctly. Uh, but you, you had suggested discussing this in terms of water, which we could go to next if you like. Yeah, I, um, 
you mentioned many topics that people don't really uh, have in common language, like um, how to die properly. Nowadays, that we are on panic because of people not knowing that you are everlasting uh, energy moving from one side to another. And, and you just said something I would like to explore deeper. So you can teach people to stay in a state of bliss. And that state of bliss allows you to see without your eyes. Is that correct? Yes, that's exactly correct. And that's well documented. We're not the only ones that do, do that uh, with brainwave measure, Karakov pioneered, but we certainly do it best, flameinmind.com, that article, flameinmind.com slash outer vision. And yes, it's, it's rather simple. The ability to implode charge, to attract and implode charge, of ul ultimately brings those two pine cone vortex, right left brain hemispheres, to the pine cones kissing noses accurately called charge implosion, accurately tuned the golden ratio multiples of the Planck threshold, where that implosive capacitance is converted for transverse to longitudinal EMF, sometimes called scalar or torsional, which is the electric field longitudinal interferometry called the collective unconscious and the communion of saints and the physics of where you go when you die. And propagating coherent longitudinal EMF is the physics of the dreaming track song lines of the aboriginals. And it's teachable by measurement actually. And it involves then knowing and understanding why it's so critical where birth and death happen and lucid dreaming happens because magnetic cross points of the earth embed these longitudinal waves accurately because the vortex converging there at accurate angles, just like phase conjugate optics, embed the transverse, the up and down motion of the electromagnetic into the compression implosion propagation of longitudinal electromagnetic, which is superluminal faster than light, acts at a distance, and the physics of all spirituality. So longitudinal interferometry is transcends Einstein, who didn't understand action at a distance. And in fact, that same longitudinal interferometry is the reason gravity exists. But that's another story. But, is there but, reason, but, this is the reason why DNA has no junk. It's a structure that has totally sense in the dicadric structures. Is the reason of so many things that... How um, can we make common knowledge, the, the fact that you discover how to teach humans? Because we humans um, are doing crazy stuff to feel love, to feel supported, to be happy, to, of course, the ultimate state is the state of bliss. So how can we normalize your wisdom and implement your knowledge uh, all over the world, the educational world or the policy makers? Because at the end, all the representatives are there representing us to make us happier at the end, no? So how can we, how can we learn um, these uh, protocols that can, is not about meditation, it's, it's about understanding the energetic uh, lines on earth and energy around in the environments we are or in the devices we use, but you have a specific protocols to, to arrive to that state of bliss. Can you mention the web page that people can reach out more data about it? Or? Well, the, the, the protocols for brainwaves is flameandmind.com. We teach the physics in the article called DNA Manifesto, and I was going to show you the pictures in a moment, but just a little background. It's goldenmean.info slash DNA Manifesto, which you put on the cover of this lecture. But just a little bit of the background here in terms of the need for political people uh, to implement the simple science of the physics of spirituality politically. Remember that the term body polis is the origin of the term politic and a beehive cannot swarm until there is royal, royal DNA to steer for the physics that that is the implosive bliss that can steer a cloud of charge, body polis, physics of the meaning and origin of the term politic, which means that literally a beehive cannot swarm until there is collective bliss. And if science were understood correctly, the only way to get and maintain an immune system is the coherence of the aura that's ultimately bliss. And the only way to take memory through death requires exactly the same. So in effect, the only way to get an immune system and to get immortal is literally to get a big aura, which ultimately is bliss. And that proven physics is the ultimate physics of spirituality and the only reason that politics should exist. So ultimately, every political decision, for example, should you get a vaccine, would ultimately be teachable by measurement. There's nothing subjective here. The size of the aura is measurable. 
It is whether you'll have an immune system and whether you will take something through death. So no one could ever suggest that the ultimate purpose of life is not to get immortal. It's obvious. We know exactly where your aura goes at death. So once we measure, for example, the GDV and other EEG tools, the size of the aura before and after, you could make every political decision from whether to radio, put radioactivity in your food to whether to get a vaccine. You measure the aura before and after, and you'll know exactly whether you served your people. There is nothing subjective. Now, in Egypt, that was called the Ka, as in Merkaba or Kaaba, the origin of the term Catholic and Cathar. And Ka in Egypt was very clear. It was the amount of electrical coherence in your aura called the boat into the underworld. And if you understand the physics of death, which you just questioned about, um, you know, when you interview large numbers of people who died, they will tell you they saw a sequence of geometry called lattice, cobweb, tunnel, spiral, Heinrich, Cluve form, constants. And we know exactly what those geometries are. They're the sequence of braid implosion operations of DNA in the presence of bliss accomplishing implosion, which is the physics of sec uh, successful death because first we know that the death visions are electrically contagious. Uh, you know, Raymond Moody documented with many surgeons why the visions of death are contagious because a charge implosion is required for successful death. You see your whole life pass from, it's about compression. And the reason for that is because your aura must implosively compress. And this is the same as the physics of successful birth. And uh, they are in the frequency cascade called caduceus Hermes, uh, down to the Planck threshold, where the transverse EMF is converted into this longitudinal wave, which goes faster than light and is centripetal. The reason focused human attention is centripetal. The reason consciousness exists and therefore propagates your memory into the longitudinal array called dreaming track, song line, and collective unconscious and communion of saints, as in where Karatkov measured where the Kogi went to make phone calls to ancestors consistently that place had fractal air. We present four ways to measure and create sacred space electrically in our biologic architecture curriculum, goldenmean.info slash architecture. So that's the background then for we can now present the visuals about how this happens in your DNA. Wow, okay. <laughs> that, that was crystal clear. You just explain immortality or eternity crystal clear with physics and saying that it's all proven and there are devices to measure it. It's so um, It's electrical yeah. engineering and spirituality. And in fact, that's why it's so important to recognize why the aboriginals did their lucid dreaming on the song lines. Because in fact, that's the place of magnetic leverage. You know, on those same magnetic crosses, Bruce Cathy measured reduced uh, uh, radioactive threshold of critical mass. And we know why, the same reason the, the Ark of the Covenant reduced radioactivity and the same reason focused human attention reduces radioactivity measurably because it's charge implosion. So the place of birth and death and lucid dreaming are critical, which is magnetic line crossing, the only way you could actually locate a labyrinth or a cathedral or successful birth and death because that longitudinal wave radio only exists at that dodecastellation fractal rose-like interstellar dodeca grid, which enables that propagation to be efficient, as in the geometry of Jodie Foster's vehicle in the movie Contact. It was dodeca for a reason, and that was about lucid dreaming. So th th when you get ready to propagate your aura into the only immortality that exists, if you understand a bit of the physics, which is called longitudinal interferometry, and are incorrectly called scalar or torsional, eventually there's nothing subjective about spiritual history. Thank you so much. I love, um, can you relate the tunnel, the dodecaedric and ether? Like, can you explain the relationship in between water substance united as it is, the tunnel where the kids and the, where the, uh, we transmute and the dodecaedric structure? Uh, for us to understand that we are immersed in a substance that we don't really understand that is water. Yes. Or how we travel through it. Um, are you seeing my screen here? And uh, not now. I, I have to add it you, and uh, you have to share a screen in the bottom of the press share a screen, and then 
Someone is asking in the chat, so does the physical body have to die necessarily or it can transmute into a plasma body and remain eternal? I guess what means eternal is the memory, it's not the body. Or is that what you think? Well, advanced. Uh... Oh, I don't know what he did. I hope he gets back <laughs> because it was so interesting. I can listen to this man for three days in a row. Okay, hope he gets back. Um, could you again? Okay. Oh, here he comes. Awesome. Here you go. Uh, sorry, we had a, a glitch there. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, yeah, perfectly fine. Thank you, sir. A short glitch. Um, to, to try to answer the question here, um, uh, the concept well known in Christianity of ascension, where you see uh, Christ is raised, is echoed in the advanced Tibetan literature, which called Green Lion, Red Lion, for example, where the Tibetan would actually shrink. And you can see the photographs, they shrink and all that's left is fingernails and hair. Now that is an orderly process of using charge compression to take your memory with you. Very appropriate and very advanced. In most cases, humans who are not ready for the very difficult disciplines it requires to shrink your molecular geometries implosively, contiguously, and take your entire aura with you. Very efficient, by the way. But so normal death experience, unfortunately, requires discarding your body. Now that is still... Uh, uh, it's possible to take virtually all your memory with you if you prepared well, which uh, is this longitudinal coherence, uh, the, the bliss disciplines, the cleansing disciplines, uh, which would be indicated by ob ability to lucid dream coherently, which means literally plasma projection. It's related to astral travel and remote viewing, and there are brainwave signatures associated. So yes, uh, implosively, it is possible to take your body with you, but not necessary. But what is necessary is to take a coherent plasma ball with you. If you remember in Nine Faces of Christ, in the first lucid dream, you took just could see. In the second lucid dream, you could both see and smell, etc., until you take all the senses with you into the lucid dream. That is practice for successful death, and uh, it indicates increased coherence in your aura where you take more organs of perception with you, and that coherence is measurable. That could explain that the new kids, because the Schumann resonance of Earth is higher, the new kids not only come with more high DNA nucleotides uh, enlightened, that they look enlightened, that makes sense when the kids look like an old soul that they already know, that you don't have to teach them nothing, they already, is it because of that, or do you, do you think um, in the theory, is it because of the enlightenment, or is it because it's, a, it's an old soul that gets back in a new body, but he already knows, he doesn't, he didn't forgot. Well, it, that's a, a beautiful uh, inquiry. And yes, there are many issues there. Uh, of course, the more bliss you have and uh, clear living you do, hopefully in nature, uh, then um, your aura gets more coherent and your DNA more implosive and you can feel magnetic lines more accurately. And that makes you younger among other things. Uh, but also the amount of memory you bring with you at birth has to do with the coherence of the birth process. Uh, the implosive moment of max compression in the birth canal should be golden ratio through put and underwater birthing many things. Uh, do it at a ley line cross, et cetera, in a cathedral. All these things big bring the memory through birth, uh, uh, underwater birthing uh, and uh, rebirthing. So the amount of memory that comes through at birth implosively depends on all those factors called fractality, basically charge implosion. And yes, uh, Eventually, the coherence of the DNA, which we call ascension or the next dimension, determines how much of your aura comes to birth. Yes. This is amazing. So by increasing by your exercise, you discover you increase the state of peace, the state of bliss, the, the capacity of um, remote viewing um, and dreaming. How do you call it? Uh, conscious dreaming. Um, mm -hmm so many human skills that we have asleep because we are the result of so much violence that we are really asleep that we don't even see reality crystal clear. I'm going to add your screen now. 
Oh, I see that it was waiting for because I just thought I'd show the visuals now on the hydrogen and DNA. Let's do this. Let's yeah. do this. Okay, okay. so here, here, <laughs> the screen went fractal. So if so, just to look at the visuals in the uh, this is goldenmean.info slash DNA manifesto, and here we talk about the geometry of braiding and implosion in DNA, and uh, you see there's a braid within a braid within a braid, which ultimately is fractal. And the point is, as we'll discuss here, is that this, this central bond in DNA, let's see if I could show it, here's the hydrogen. So this center bond, this is each rung of the ladder of DNA codon, uh, is pent-hex golden rectangle. And the center of that golden rectangle, as you can see here, the center bond of the zipper of DNA is hydrogen. And we're going to explain that that's important because if you look at the, let's see here. This is a little bit bigger picture of that hydrogen bond at the center of the zipper of imploding DNA. Now, so if the, if the DNA is recursively braiding to the point of implosion, and then you realize from my new equation, which is the proof that hydrogen is fractal. Here, you can see it. It's small here. But if you take the Planck length times integer exponents of golden ratio, uh, you get exactly three hydrogen radii, proving this implosive geometry at the heart of hydrogen, which is the fractality, which is the reason hydrogen makes gravity, and uh, effectively the reason gravity exists. And that translation to longitudinal at the heart of hydrogen is how ultimately the hydrogen bond in the center of the recursively braiding DNA uh, becomes implosive. So here's the braid within the braid. Let's see if there's another picture here, the braid within the braid. Yeah, here's it. So you see, here's the helix, and that that's thread is braided into string, and the string is braided into rope, and that's braided into fat rope. And so ultimately, that alignment of the short wave in the long wave makes this threading in DNA implosive, not just macromolecularly, but right at the level of hydrogen in the center. Now, we explained all of this years ago, and recently now, here's a new paper which just came out in the physics literature explaining how DNA transcription is regulated by the toroidal vortices within DNA embedding longitudinal wave conduction. So it's like the people who wrote this article must have read my paper, even though they didn't mention it. So the physics literature is catching up with us to say, yes, this longitudinal embedding within DNA is how DNA becomes psychoactive. Uh, evidence for DNA resonance signaling via longitudinal hydrogen bonds. And remember, now the next piece of this puzzle is where we measured with Glenn Ryan. Originally, I had predicted at Heart Math Institute when I taught them how to take their first EKG, and when I taught them the meaning of heart coherence, uh, I taught Glenn Ryan there on the spot that heart coherence was braiding DNA. So Glenn took my suggestion and measured the effect of heart coherence on DNA. Here you see the amount of the enzyme responsible for the braid density affected before and after exposure to this coherence in EKG. And I invented heart coherence, and I invented how to measure it. I invented the word. And now that is our technology, realheartcoherence.com. And this is the measurement of that coherence in the heart causing DNA to braid implode. And this is the web page about the, our, our plasma technology, therify.net, used for rejuvenation and pain reduction in 25 countries, very powerful for water treatment also. And this is the web page where Glenn Ryan also measured the effect of this plasma technology on DNA. And just for the final picture here is here's that plasma tech, these are the plasma tubes. This is the water. And there's a dramatic, like something 12 to 20% a direct effect even on the simple conductivity in the water simply placed in the presence of imploding plasma here at therify.net that water becomes bioactive and tastes differently and uh in fact uh 30 percent of people who have that plasma experience also report bliss 
and report sharpened vision. Now I'm going to stop sharing here. So that's a little bit of the visuals in the background. So you understood how everything worked out and you know how to restore water itself. And as we are immersed in the substance, because there's no separation in water, there's no rivers, no oceans, no seas, no rain a part of, there's no, for me, there's no um, separation in between ether, air, steam, and liquid. And you discover that we can reprogram water, we can restructure completely the substance we are immersed in. And you've been sharing 30 years ago <laughs> how to do that, how we can bring this technology to the mainstream public, like in hospitals, in schools, in malls, in, in domestic use, industrial use, all the, those corporations that are feeding us and, and making our drinks and making our stuff, uh, how they can uh, supply themselves with your devices to make a more healthy products and 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 get back to the to the um, oh you share your screen again you well, yes I, I just thought well i appreciate that question and it's very relevant and in that regard i thought i would share the other major water treatment technology uh the imploder.com and we use a vortex technology it looks like this it's a, a double vortex and um uh that vortex causes charge implosion in the water. Uh, here's the uh, imploder magnetic research page. And we've been distributing the imploder and now the ultra imploder for many years. And it creates hypersolubility, uh, super spin dense water, uh, solving the problem of hydration for both plants and people. And that's one example of restoring spin density in water. And we use this principle here, which we've been discussing, if we take the equation for the perfect vortex on the cone, which is how transverse becomes longitudinal, and I converted my original equation for golden spiral on the vortex cone, which is the newly proven from me to be the physics of hydrogen, and I use that to then create this vortex nozzle, which we call Schauberger's dream, and uh, uh, that is the heart and centerpiece of our super imploder and ultra imploder. And that restores centripetal force, which is the neg entropy. And my book is entitled Origin of Biologic Neg Entropy for that reason. So theimploder.com would be one example of an answer to your question. So uh, by consuming that water, you restructure uh, the DNA itself. So you recover health and recover order and coherence by consuming water that had uh, passed through plasma or through the imploder? This is what you... Well, you know, we have measured the effect on DNA of both the plasma and the imploder in terms of braiding. But um, uh, I think that the, the actual conventional medical wisdom would express it more simply, which is that the, probably the majority of health issues ultimately are about hydration. Back problems, hair problems, etc., is simply if about hydration. And hydration has to do with solubility. That's why people and plants love the plasma and love the therify because they restore spin density and that's the solubility effect. That's also why we can often replace a water softener with the imploder and why people love drinking the imploder water and therify water and they complement each other beautifully. In fact, Imploder water, the imploder in a spa, is famous for treating skin conditions and is often used in conjunction with Therify.net at Therify centers, where the plasma therapy is used in conjunction with hypersoluble water, which was also part of our bloomthedesert.com project. It's so impressive that this exists and, like, it's not, uh, I mean, you are in lot of countries, but it's not common knowledge. And the ones making decisions, they don't really understand physics, neither how hydrogen works or how the DNA works. So what we as users can do to ask representatives to reach uh, those inventions and basically implement those inventions in all the public buildings and the schools or any, like how can we make pressure for this to be common use, for, for people to have this 
close to them to feel better. That's the right question. You know, our technology, flameinmind.com, for measuring life force, if you click on life force there, uh, we have shown that we can measure life force in buildings. So we can measure whether a building will cause a seed to grow and therefore will cause your child to grow. And that is a weak spectrum analysis of the weak capacitive field, which is not unlike the brainwave work. We use the same hardware to do it. And we've shown by measurement, we can cause seeds to grow in buildings and cause life force to happen, the physics of sacred space, which explains now the well-known phenomena why a steel and aluminum building, steel and aluminum building plus electrosmog will kill a germinating seed and ultimately destroy your child's aura. We understand the physics. So as you can convince your politicians to create space, cities, and architectural design, which contain life force, the reason a magnetic map is required to make a good city, <laughs> uh, it needs to look like a rose. And so as we define life force, ultimately, we can reinvent architecture, urban design, and even then we can make intelligent decisions about 5G and electrosmog once we understand what it is that makes an aura grow. But ultimately, until your universities and government know that the coherence of your aura is the only hope for immune health and immortality, that government cannot make intelligent decisions. Yeah, nowadays uh, the environments are not really healthy, neither the food uh, people consume because it's basically made by people that doesn't understand energy that creates matter and how intention impacts matter too. Uh, so we will do our best for reaching out everyone that can make a intelligence decision about how to build devices or environments or even protocols of behavior based in uh, secret <laughs> Let me give you let me give you a very practical example that that might be a little bit of a trigger for the Americans. You know that uh, Tesla, uh, I don't think understood uh, longitudinal interferometry accurately when he conveyed energy without wires. We do. That's why Einstein called action at a distance spooky because he did not understand longitudinal interferometry. And um, so one of Tesla's mistakes was selecting the dominant sixty cycle power transmission, which dominates America. Now, today we know, uh, as our leading partners building the only real pure carbon nano in the world discovered, is that carbon nano will die, and carbon nano will ultimately replace all energy and propulsion on this planet, definitely, and uh, making most of our planet's technology quite childish, uh, spinning conjugators. And uh, the interesting thing, and here is, this is called Tesla karma for not teaching your legislators. The Tesla karma is Tesla chose 60 cycle for North America. It fills the place. And 60 cycle is the frequency at which the voltage required to stop the heart is lowest. So it's fatal by measurement. Medically, Tesla screwed up. He thought, oh, 1800 RPM, cool, cool. Huh? He was wrong. Now in Europe, they use 50 cycle. Now in 60 cycle, carbon nano cannot grow. Sorry, America, you're screwed. But 50 cycle in Europe is the frequency most commonly mentioned in all the cancer literature for curing cancer. Do you know why? Because Planck times exact exponents of golden ratio is 49.98 hertz. It's bang on almost 50. It's conjugate. It's fractal. It's sacred. It's implosive. It's healing. So 50 cycle allows carbon nano to grow. It's dodecastellated fractal fullerene. <laughs> and 60 cycle prevents it. So sorry, USA, because Tesla did not know you do not have a shot at carbon nanotech. Oops. You see, this is an example of not knowing what life force is and how ultimately you betray your whole civilization. Well, <laughs> I guess some Tesla fans are kind of annoyed right now, but you know. Uh, we, we, have, we have the listing, the listing of the Einstein's mistakes and Tesla's mistakes. They're all at fractalfield.com slash vacuum energy. So you list all the misunderstanding with Einstein and Tesla exploration. Yes. It, it's called uh, 
Symptoms of Einstein-Induced Insanity. Uh, example, uh, not having a clue why objects fall to the ground. Uh, thinking all action at a distance is spooky. Uh, thinking the speed of light is a speed limit. These are indications of Einstein-induced insanity and create the schizophrenia, which do not understand a unified field. For example, you must understand that charge rotation is the only origin and definition of both mass and time. Because uh, charge rotation, of course, stores inertia named mass and has a period named time. So once you know that charge rotation is the only origin and definition of both mass and time, then you avoid the stupidities of scientists saying, saying, saying that gravity bends space-time. No, gravity bends the fabric upon which charge rotates and pulls charge towards center. But of course, if you do not know why an object falls to the ground, ultimately you cannot understand consciousness, you cannot understand how anything is negentropic. In fact, you can't even understand how a plasma cloud became self-aware. So you can't understand the origin of spirituality. And that all starts with not having a clue why an object falls to the ground. Mr. Einstein, Mr. Hawkins, and NASA, you're screwed until you do. I love that you can say this alive. Like you are, I mean, We're not reading it, you are, we're hearing you saying, Guys, you're completely upside down. Don't make any decision. You have no authority because you don't know no, how gravity is right. created. Right. I, I, I suggest that you defund the physics department of every university until they know why an object falls to the ground. <laughs> so they can understand consciousness. and they Absolutely. Can understand they don't know why anything is negentropic or centripetal. Therefore, they believe the stupidity that the universe is condemned to entropy. And in fact, it's the opposite. But you cannot know the origin of biologic negentropy, the title of my book, until you know why an object falls to the ground. Now, let me say why an object falls to the ground. If you look at the top-down view of hydrogen, which I proved by equation, 10 spirals of the golden mean shows the radii, the waves add and multiply by golden ratio their phase velocity, called recursive constructive heterodyning of phase velocities. And that means a portion of the charge compression adds and multiplies the phase velocities, and that produces acceleration of charge only through golden ratio towards center, for example, in hydrogen, and that is named the gravity. And that is why objects fall to the ground. And once we know that, we can know why anything is centripetal, clouds that become angels, the origin of mind, and the origin of negentropy. Wow. I'm really happy that you're alive and doing your work. <laughs> yes. What can you explain us about the relationship between consciousness and water? Well, it's been me measured many times, usually using water, that focused human attention causes electric fields to compress in water primarily, or for example. And that's Bill Tiller's famous book, Conscious Acts of Creation. And no scientist on the planet should be allowed to say they have a theory of consciousness until they know exactly why focused human attention causes electric fields to compress. It's fundamentally centripetal. I am the first one to explain that. Therefore, I am the first one to explain the physics of consciousness. It is centripetal because it's implosive. That's why golden ratio in EEG is so important and why it's named flameinmind.com. Thank you. So that means that if, as we are explosive energy uh, through an implosive vortex, our intention um, impacts matter. So a lot of humans thinking about the same thing will make uh, an impact in reality by focusing, is that that's correct? That's right, and that's, you know, when we first discovered that heart coherence was a functional lie detector, so I measured, I discovered how to measure heart coherence, it's called a Sepsium second order power spectra, realheartcoherence.com, and uh, it's c commercially usable as a functional lie detector. It's also a good way to decide whether to say yes when he asks you to marry him, because uh, it will tell you whether he's lying. Uh, 
and because your electrocardiogram functionally cannot become phase coherent unless the wave is shareable. A wave shareability perfected propagation is called fractal, and that efficient ability to propagate uh, called heart coherence it re requires embeddability in the larger collective conscious. So in practice, it's why you know never buy a used car from a salesman whose eyes are shifty because uh, it, if they cannot focus, they cannot cause the waves to align or cohere because they're not part of a shareable wave. So pure intention is an electrical reality and it determines whether you become implosive. For example, if you truly are feeling love and you walk past a mountain or a flower, the charge in that mountain or flower or river will want to jump onto you because your ability to radiate a shareable wave, pure intention, that charge knows you will deliver it a path to sustainable immortality because you have pure intention. So you will attract electric charge sometimes called a Eureka or a Jimmy Willie or a warm fuzzy. It's your hair stood up. Well, your hair stood up because you became part of a shareable wave. So pure intention is a reality. And because it limits or it, it is your potential to attract charge, it, it determines your immortality. So when you fall in love with um, something technological or mechanic, you are not doing yourself a favor at all. That's right. That's why they say you only fall in love with pure intention because effectively your heart is always looking for a shareable wave because it's your path to becoming shareable yourself. And so don't fall in love with metal buildings or something that's not pure. Ultimately, your, your aura is looking for a path to perfect distribution. Someone asked in the chat, um, can a human defy gravity with this wisdom? Um, if you've Can ever we... felt if you've ever felt intense kundalini you will feel like a red hot poker going up your tailbone you can read about the wave mechanics at goldenmean.info slash kundalini uh, but that's an example of creating gravity with your aura uh, it's called paying your debt to gravity but our friends actually valerie's friend uh, saw her grandmother floating it's quite real and uh if you read about the grabenikov work of the insect skeletons which created gravity. Uh, it has to do with developing a very high dielectric constant and becoming charge implosive, becoming more implosive than the earth underneath you. Another example would be the mercury vortex doped with iron powder, red liquid, which became the heart of the Vimana, Nazi Bell, and Hanbu and Schauberger by which they made gravity. It's a perfected vortex. It's what the hummingbirds use to levitate without flying, because I heard that the, and not hummingbirds, the bumblebees, the bumblebees yeah. don't fly with the wings. They make a frequency that makes them move all over without flying. Is that the same? Well, <laughs> there are a lot of jokes about that nobody taught the bumblebee the laws of physics, so they disobeyed the laws of physics. But <laughs> yeah, that's only a joke. And the other saying is that bumblebee and the hummingbird treat the air molecules like they were syrup. <laughs> but but uh, what Grabenikov discovered is that in addition, like the joke was about the postmen in Tibet who were said to float, uh, their bone structure became implosive capacitively uh, and if you see, it's, you'll see the pictures of Grabenikov's work and the floating insect skeletons at goldenmean.info slash gravity politics. And um, basically, extremely high dielectric constant implosive capacitance in bone, for example, or in the Ark of the Covenant, or in the Philosopher's Stone, or in the Kaaba Stone. Um, is the key to phase conjugation. It's what Einstein, it's what Nostradamus used to coat the bottom of his scrying cup, the physics of phase conjugate mirrors and the Olmec uh, black mirror. It's the key to clairvoyance and John Dee's work. Uh, so the phase conjugate dielectrics are based on super high dielectric materials. Example, 
If the dielectric material between the plate of a capacitor is high enough, that device is a zero point energy, vacuum energy source. Wow. Did you ever explore to create a levitator device or you um, to be seen <laughs> in water? You, you can read about the uh, propulsion device based on charge implosion at fractalfield.com slash propulsion. Examples by equation there are the water vortex and mercury to vortex physics of Vimana Nazi Bell. Um, and uh, then the solid state version, which would be the Kosky Frost device, 800 times its own weight as crystal of gravity made by a phase conjugate pump wave. Uh, but more practically, uh, recently, um, and remember, the trick is to keep these out of the hands of the military, and that's a big trick. And we are, we have teams doing that, and that's a that's a real magic trick. Uh, but um, it, when when incompetent Keshe rotated low grade nanomaterials inside a ping pong ball, uh, he produced modest amounts of both gravity and energy. But if you can make ninety nine percent pure carbon nano, like only our term team can at very high speed rotation you produce both propulsion gravity and energy and so we have many examples of that and uh, there are many people involved in these projects and many understand this and uh, of course the u.s government uh, has been stealing the majority of all patent applications for the military for many years and keeping these things out of just military application is is one of the major goals of our teams around the world because we would like to put them in the service of humans instead of the service of killing humans. <laughs> Make life bloom instead of die. So basically, you have devices that can measure if someone is lying or not, that can put people in bliss, that can restructure the DNA, that can um, help you to transcend this body and, and have a another structure afterwards you have it looks like you have devices to fix all the issues on earth like everything well let's not make it sound like a panacea we have made wonderful progress our therify.net is powerful and effective and moves a long way in this direction uh, the imploder does uh, the flame in mind does uh, another giant leap forward will be both our uh, carbon nanotech and uh, we have a, a, a molten nickel battery. Uh, we have multiple energy groups. So we're, we've made wonderful progress. And actually, we have major breakthroughs in support as well. And you know, people who have technical competence who want to play with us are welcome to say hi, uh, fractalfield.com. But uh, you know, this is a team effort. Uh, you know, don't point to, to just me. Thank you. Oh, I mean, your people around, but you've been talking about you are the one who put a trend, the word fractal and makes people see the sacred geometry structures. I mean, sacred because they are eternal. And yeah, you open so many minds and I really well, want to thank you and thank all your team for all the effort. And of course, to keep all these pure things in pure hands instead of the ones confused with separation that believes that they are apart or their country is apart in the sphere or they they are out of water so they can't pollute it or they or they don't they're not gonna breathe the chemicals they put in the air or things like that so thank you for keeping all these inventions out of, of the confused ones and train the not not so confused to do yes I, and, and i wouldn't say that everyone in the military is evil absolutely i think there's a lot of wonderful people there too but we'd like to just create a priority which is human based if we can so we're playing in that direction another thing i'd like to uh, remind everyone is that actually it's very popular in physics today to say that fractality causes gravity uh, but we're the only ones to actually write the equations to prove it because even einstein knew that implos infinite non-destructive compression was the cause of gravity but no one told him what a fractal was and until our work it's true i don't think anyone even asked the question what a fractal electric field is and we now know that's phase conjugation based on golden ratio tuned to Planck.
So basically nowadays you can create a healthy building where the aura or the energetic fields or the morphic fields are um, implosive, like blooming. You can fix the water that the humans drink inside. And you told me the other day about um, seeds growing three or five times faster and bigger. So you erase all the beliefs that are allowing confused humans to harm others about the lack of abundance or lack of resources or lack of water, all these things that they invent to, to keep fighting and, and ripping off each other, you have all the solutions, uh, your team has all the solutions to fix all that. That is amazing. Well, well, you know, years ago when they finally figured out that pyramids and stone dolmen were never made to live in or to even to die in, uh, one of their primary purposes was to charge seeds before germination, and which is the physics of sacred space. Now, it turns out that, that hemp and marijuana growers absolutely assure us that when you zap the hemp seeds with Therify.net plasma just before germination, imploders like it too, but with Therify, they're getting two to five times the amount of growth. So, so yes, uh, you know, we, we do think we understand what causes a seed to grow electrically. And you can use that to create abundance very practically. It works. It's so cool. Black, uh, abundance in, in growing uh, veggies, in growing your own self yeah. and yeah. being happy. And like, let's normalize this, please. Everyone watching this, like, let's call all the representatives and educators and say, like, please update yourself in physics and in water. Absolutely. You know, I'd like just one more quick example. So the leading biodynamic scientist of France, Lawrence, he's a hero and a saint as far as I'm concerned. He learned how to put biodynamic charge inside our imploder vortex. And he's demonstrated it around the world. He can, he, he can eliminate all needs for chemical vaccines and, and, and uh, pesticides in not just, you know, grapes and plant growth, but even in, in shrimp and did this in Thailand, totally eliminated all needs for water additives, everything by making the perfect vortex and charging it biodynamically, a perfect succussion shower stream is our vortex. So it's biodynamic t technology of dynamization perfected. So, you know what? his most recent acquisition is, is the Therify Plasma. It's the ultimate way to biodynamically treat seeds and, and make them alive. So people are buying the plasma systems, which used to be for people, just for agriculture. So with this plasma charger and the imploder of water, you basically make the seeds bloom and be, be fed by proper water that is alive. It's not dead water full of chemicals or dead water full of bad intentions. Your imploder uh, recovers fractality and purity. And then with the plasma, you make things just bloom and thrive. Uh, it's really, really quite simple. If you think of what makes a seed alive and not dead, it's ability to suck in the next nutrient. And that implosion is life. And that's why hypersolubility, which is implosive, causes growth. Actually, um. I'm a bit out of time here and my voice is letting out here. So I guess I have to. Thank you so much. That was amazing. I hope everyone gets inspired and do the right thing and invoke you and invoke your services and your devices. Thank you for keeping such a good open heart and sharing all this wisdom with us. And please keep going. Keep Happy to do this again. Thank you so much. Say hi at fractalfield.com. And I'd love to do this again. I honor your work as well. Blessings. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.